This is part 3 of ASP.NET Web Services tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using ASP.NET session state in a web service. This is continuation to part 2. So please watch part 2 from the web services tutorial before proceeding with this video. To use ASP.NET session object in a web service, there are two things that we need to do. First, the web service class should inherit from system.web.services.webservice class. Second, we need to set enable session property of the web method attribute to true. So let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the calculator web service that we worked with in the previous session. At the moment, notice that this class is already inheriting from system.web.services.webservice class. The second thing is to set enable session property to true. All right. Now, this is what we want to achieve. We want to display all the recent calculations that the user has performed in a grid view, as you can see here. Look at this. This user has first added 45 and 36, next 89 and 96, and finally 78 and 12. We want to display the recent calculations using a session object. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So within the add method, First, let's create a variable of type, list of string, and let's call it calculations. Now, we're going to make use of session object within this method. So, if session, look at that, we have access to the session object. That's because this calculator web service class is inheriting from web service class. What is going to happen if we remove this parent class. Look at that. When I say session, you know, you don't have direct access to the session object. That's why we need to make this class inherit from this class, system.web.services.webservice class. Okay, so let's use a session variable. Let's call it calculations. So basically, we are going to use this session key to store all the calculations that this method is going to receive. So if session of calculations, if that is equal to null, then we know for sure the user has not performed any calculations yet, in which case we are going to create a new instance of list of string. On the other hand, if session of calculations is not null, that means the user has already performed some calculations and those calculations will be stored in the session. So we want to retrieve those calculations out of the session and store in this object. So let's copy this session of calculations. And then let's typecast whatever we are going to retrieve to be of type list of string and then we are going to store that within this calculations variable. All right. Now, how do we want to display a recent calculation? We want the first number, space, and then a plus symbol, and then space, and then the second number equal to, and then the sum of those two numbers. This is how we want the output to be for every calculation that the user has performed. And in order to achieve that, let's use a string variable here. And let's call it string um, str recent calculation. And that one equal to, we need the first number. So let's convert that to string. And to the first number, we need to concatenate the plus symbol. And then the second number, so let's convert that to string as well. And then to the second number, we need to concatenate equal to. And then finally, to that, we need to concatenate the sum of the two numbers. So first number plus second number. Add those two numbers together. And the result, convert that to string. OK, so basically this variable is going to contain um, you know, the output that we expect. And what we need to do is add this string 
to our calculations. So calculations basically here is a string array. So calculations dot add. All right. So next we need to store this calculations object within the session variable. So session of calculations equals the calculations object itself. So very straightforward implementation code here. So basically we are checking is there anything in the session variable if that is the case. I mean if it's null then create a new instance of this variable else if if there is something already within the session then go ahead and retrieve those calculations and store it in this variable and then every time this method is called obviously you know we want to build you know the recent calculation that looks like this so this expression here is going to do that for us and then we are storing that um, calculation within this calculations object and then we are storing it back into the session variable so that we don't lose it. All right. Now we need another method which is going to return all the recent calculations that the user has performed. So let's include another public method here. And this method is going to return all the calculations. And the calculations should be returned as a list of string. So the return type is going to be list of string and let's call this method get calculations. And we need to decorate this method also with web method attribute and we want to use session object even within this method. So let's set enable session property to true. Right. So now what is this method going to do? It's going to check the session variable. If session of calculations If that is equal to null, then we know that the user has not performed any calculations, in which case we are going to create a new list of string. Let's call it calculations equals new list of string. And to this calculations, let's add a string stating you have not performed any calculations. and we are going to return that. So pretty straightforward. On the other hand, if session of calculations is not null, then the user has performed some calculations and we have stored that within the session variable. So we are going to return those calculations back. So typecast that to be of type list of string and then return it. All right, let's build and then let's view our web service in the browser. So at this point, this web service should list two methods, add method, which is going to add two numbers. So let's add maybe uh, 20 and 30. So 20 and 30 sum is 50. That's what we get back. Let's do another calculation, maybe 15 and 25. Let's invoke that. So 15.25 is 40. Now let's go back and test our get calculations method. So this method doesn't accept any parameters. So simply click on that button, invoke, and look at this. Whatever calculations that we have performed are displayed, and they are returned as an array of strings. All right. So our web service is working as expected. All that is left is now to use this get calculations method within our client web application. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So here we have the calculator client web application and within webform1.aspx, let's drag and drop a grid view control. So let's use a TR and let's specify another TD and let's set column span to two. And let's drag and drop a grid view control. And let's call this GV calculations. 
All right. So within the code behind file, so let's go ahead and invoke get calculations method. So we have the client object, which is an instance of the uh, calculator web service proxy class. So client dot get calculations. Look at that. We don't have that method. Why is that? That's basically because if you look at the proxy class that we are using, which is present in this reference file, we discussed this in our previous session. So here is that calculator web service soap client class. And at the moment, if you notice this class, it only has got add function. It doesn't have get calculations function. And why is that? That's basically because you know we developed this proxy class long back you know, when the web service was initially implemented. After that, the web service implementation has changed. And since the implementation has changed, we haven't updated this proxy class. OK, so to update this proxy class to use those new methods as well, all you need to do is right click on this calculator service under service reference folder and select this option, update service reference. And look at this, after the reference is updated, it's going to automatically generate get calculations method. So look at this, we have get calculations method. It's basically going to return an array of string. So now let's go back to our code behind file. Now when we say get calculations, look at that, we can see it. So this method is going to return an array of strings. We want to set that as the data source for our grid view control. And finally, invoke data bind. All right. So let's go ahead and view this web form in the browser and see if it displays the recent calculations as expected. All right, let's go ahead and add two numbers. So let's add 45 and 55. Look at this. We already performed one calculation. It says you have not performed any calculations. Let's try and do another calculation, maybe 12 and 13. Look at this. It still says you have not performed any calculations. Why is that? And if you recollect, we have tested the web service method, and it was working fine. Get calculations was returning the calculations that we have performed. But when we called that web service from the client web application, it's not working as expected. That's basically because, at the moment, this web application is not sending the same session ID to the web service. That's the reason why it's not working. To make it work, all we need to do is in web.config file. So here we have bindings. We'll discuss bindings in detail in a later video session. And within basic HTTP binding, look at this attribute, allow cookies. That is set to false by default. And you may be wondering, where did we get this section from? We didn't write this you know, by hand. This is automatically generated for us when we added a service reference to the calculator web service. Okay, So allow cookies by default it is set to false. Set that to true. And now let's run our web form once again. So let's add 10 and 20. Let's click Add. Look at that. 10 plus 20 equals 30, 25 and 35. So now it's working as expected. Now look at this by default. It gives item as the heading for the grid view control. If you want to change that within the code behind file, maybe you can say GV calculations dot header row dot cells of zero dot text. We want to set that to something like recent calculations. Let's run it once more. So 10, 20, add them. So recent calculations, 10, 20, 10 and 60. So basically, it's going to display all the recent calculations. And in order to achieve this, we are using session object. All right. 
So if the web service has changed, the proxy class in the client application needs to be updated. To do this, right-click on the Calculator Service and Service References folder and select Update Service Reference option. Set Allow Cookies attribute to True for the client application to accept the cookie returned from the ASMX web service so that the client can copy it into all the future requests that are made into the web service. And we need to set this attribute in the web.config file of the client application. This will ensure that the same session is maintained between the client and the web service. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.